Hello everyone, my name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy and this video is a short demonstration on how to calculate the F ratio from a one-way ANOVA using Excel. I'd often find that um, for some research students that they'd often been doing analysis of variance in their, in their research. Now it could be a one-way ANOVA, two-way, repeated measures, and COVAs and so on like that. And I would always encourage that if a student was using a lot of ANOVAs, uh, using ANOVA as a statistical test in their research, that they should just understand, I suppose, what's actually happening with an ANOVA, that they should nearly just spend a small bit of time maybe working out a one-way ANOVA by hand, or equally just doing the calculations manually. So I just felt that it could be just maybe of interest to actually just uh, show or to demonstrate how to do the ANOVA calculations by hand. And the main thing here would be just how do we actually get the F ratio, okay? So not so much the p-value or anything like that because I would feel that if you're using SPSS or Minitab or R Studio, you can generate that p-value, but it's just how do you kind of get to the point of getting that p-value? So how do we actually get the F ratio? So I'm just going to use Excel to do this. Uh, so I'm just going to look at a scenario of where there are five independent groups. So group A up to group E. So there's no context to this. There's five independent groups and there's 10 measurements within each group. And I just basically want to show how do we actually get the uh, calculate, I suppose, populate this table, which is our traditional ANOVA table up to the F ratio, not including obviously the p-value. Again, you can get the p-value using a uh, um, statistical tables if you want to, to, uh, to get a p-value but ultimately you will get the p-value using a using your statistical package okay so this is just more how do you actually get well like what does it mean to say the sum of squares degrees of freedom the mean square and so on like that okay so the idea to an ANOVA I mean ultimately I suppose if you're looking to try to determine whether or not there's a difference like if you think of an independent t-test when you're trying to determine whether there's a difference you ultimately use subtraction to determine whether or not there's a difference or more so whether the difference that you're observing is statistically significant. When you're doing an ANOVA, an ANOVA, what you're looking at is you're actually doing division. Okay, so division is the technique that you're applying. And the ANOVA, which is an analysis of variance, is ultimately looking at the, the variance between your factor, oh, sorry, between the levels within your factor and uh, as uh, in comparison to the variance within your levels. Okay, so if we just maybe work through this, and as I'm working through the calculations, we can maybe just, uh, be, I'll be explaining through the different parts, okay? So what I'll be seeing here is a group here, I f a kind of group will be a factor. There are five levels to the factor, okay? So what I want to do then for this one here is I want to just first work out what is the mean for each one of the, the levels, okay? So I'm just going to work this out, average here, and I'm going to work out this guy here. So what is the average? And we get that result back, and I'm just going to copy across that and this is it okay so there do that's the mean for each of the levels okay group a up to group e and what i'm interested in is how do those means vary between each other that's my first thing that i'm interested in what is the variance between the levels okay so how i work out the variance between the levels then is i need to work out what is the overall average first okay so work out the overall average now I could do it two ways when I'm working out the overall average I can take the average of all these 50 values up here or take the average of the the means down here we get the same answer it doesn't matter so I just do this one and there we have it okay now what I'm interested in here in the first case then is how do the five means here vary between each other that's what I'm first interested in okay so what I'd be looking at doing then is I'd be looking at what is the difference between the first mean and the overall mean Okay, so that is the difference. Now, and then we ultimately kind of want to sum all the differences up, but then you know that when you work out differences, you'll end up with positive differences and negative differences. So when you sum them all up, they could actually cancel. Okay, so what we actually do is we work out the difference and then we square them. Okay, and this is where, so then this is where, I suppose, when you see over there, this SS means sum of squares. So this is where the squares note uh, idea is coming from. And then what you end up with are you're going to end up with these five squares. So you're just actually going to add the five squares together. And then that's where your sum of squares comes from. Okay. So the first thing we're going to just do here is I'm just going to work out what is the, the difference. So the difference here will be eight minus the overall. So here. Okay. So that's just going to be the difference. And if I do that, that's what I end up with. Okay. So you can see that we're getting a negative difference there. Now you could do that all the way across. Now, if I'm doing it all the way across, I just want to lock. What do I want to lock? I want to lock the column. I don't want to change that. So if I do this all the way across there, these are my five differences. Okay. So that's what I worked out there. So you can just check if I click on this one, this would be 13 minus 11.06. It is. Boom. Okay. So what I'm just actually going to do here now, I'm just going to give this a bit of name. So I'm going to call this difference NCE. 
like that, okay? And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the square of the differences, okay? Because what's going to happen is if we sum up the differences, you're going to see, look, you have negative differences and positive differences, and they'll kind of cancel with each other, and you could end up with a, a sum of a difference of being zero, which would be kind of saying, look, that there's no variance between the groups, but clearly we can see that there is a variance, okay? So what you would do then is you square these guys, okay? So I'm just going to square them and put that across, and there they are. Okay, so what we actually have now worked out are squares. Okay, so this is just focusing on the between first, which is looking at the variance between the five levels. Okay, then we now want to work out the sum of squares. Now, the sum of squares basically is adding these five guys up. Okay, that's really it. But there's one additional component to it that when you're working out the sum of squares, you multiply it then by the number of replicates that you actually have. Okay, so what we have here is we've 10 replicates per level. So in this example here, when we're doing the sum of squares, this is going to be equal. 10 times which is n so n little n with your replicates 10 times the sum of all your squares and this is what we end up with okay so 351.52 and there that's that bit done okay then the degrees of freedom now the degrees of freedom is i suppose it's ultimately the number of levels that you have less one in this case okay so if you look at it here we have five levels so five less one is four Another way of looking at it is if you think of this sum of squares calculation that we've just done here, how many numbers do we use to get that calculation? Well, we used five numbers to get that calculation, so then five minus one is going to be four, and so that's the other way of thinking of the degrees of freedom. But ultimately, the degrees of freedom here for your between are the number of levels you have less one, then your mean square is your sum of squares divided by your degrees of freedom, and there's the result that you get back. Okay? So that's that bit done. Now, with further within the within is very straightforward as well so further within uh, what you're looking at is you're looking at the variance within each level so that's the idea okay you're looking at the variance within each so you look at the first level which is group a how do the numbers vary within each other okay how do the numbers vary within group b within group c and so on now what you're looking at is you're looking at the variance of group a with obviously with respect to the mean here okay so you're ultimately doing the idea of a difference again, okay? So I'll just do it here, but I, I won't do it in two steps. I'll just quick, I will in the first one, but then I'll copy and paste, okay? So you work out your, you take your first entry, which is 10. How does that differ from your overall mean? And you get a difference of two, okay? So that's your difference within that first level. Now, then you want to square your difference. So I, I'm just going to do that squaring technique all in one go. So I'm just going to square that, and that's where I end up, okay? Then I want to do that for all, so that what I can see here is that the, I suppose the squares for this entry here is actually going to be a four. Okay, so the difference squared is ultimately a four. So I want to need to work out the different squares for all 50 values. Okay, and then I'm going to sum them all up. Okay, so I need to work out the different squares for the first 10, then is in the 10 within group A, then the 10 within group B, and so on like that. Okay, so I, I'm going. This is just going to be copy and paste. Now when I'm copy and pasting this, what do I want to lock? I want to lock the um, I want to lock, the, in this case, I want to lock the column, don't I? Like, no, I actually want to lock the row. Sorry, I was just thinking there, sorry about that. I was just thinking what I want to ro lock, I want to lock the row. And so I'm just going to copy this guy down. So let me lose count. So here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I end up with that. Okay. And so this is what I end up with. Now, did I do that correctly? So if I do that, then if I look at this one, you can see the last entry, like what's the difference? Well, it's eight, eight minus eight is zero, zero squared is zero, so that's correct. And so you just wanna do that then for all your 50 measurements. So I'm just gonna copy this guy across, and that's it here, okay? So if I click, we'll just say, if we look at the first one here, this 12, so this should be 12 minus 12 squared, okay? Which obviously is gonna be zero, and that's where that's coming from. Okay, so what we're just doing here for each of these 50 is we're working out what is the squares within okay so first what is the squares within level one the first level which is group a what is the squares within level two uh, sorry group b and then so on like that okay and then all we're doing in that case then is now what we have here are 50 squares which are the squares of your differences so now we're just going to sum them all up so we're going to say equals sum these five guys up and we end up with that Okay, so what we have now in this case here now is our sum of squares within. Okay, and then after that, then now the next step then is the degrees of freedom. Well, the degree of freedom is your total sample size, which is going to be 50, less the number of levels you have will be five levels. So the answer there will be 45. That's one way of thinking of it. So it's your total sample size less the number of levels you have. 
okay so that would be 45 or another way to look at it and it's i mean either or it doesn't matter you could say the degrees of freedom well if you're looking at the first measurement the degrees of freedom when you're looking at these 10 measurements here the 10 squares of the differences was going to be 9 and then you do that across for the other ones and they're going to be all 9 and 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, plus 9 is obviously going to be 45 and that's where you get this back okay and then same I text technique you're going to divide the sum square uh, you're going to divide the sum of squares uh, with respect to the degrees of freedom okay and then all we need to then after that then is to work out uh, we basically want to compare the variances okay so ultimately what we're doing here is we're looking at what is the variance between our levels then and comparing that to the variance within if there's no difference across all the levels well then when we do the comparison we should ultimately look get if we were doing subtraction we looked at the idea you'd expect zero but when you're doing the ANOVA technique you're using division so you'd expect an answer of close to one okay if there is to be no difference anywhere but if there's going to be a difference then you'd expect that your F ratio is going to be different from one and then you want to know well is that difference from one statistically significant and this is where your p-value then will come from okay so like ultimately it's, it's kind of like looking at your data horizontally and looking at it vertically and if there's no difference anywhere well then it, it should it shouldn't matter which way you look at it everything should balance out that's kind of the logic here to doing a between and, and within okay now you could check then if you wanted like, so ultimately we've enough done here and if we were to do this in a statistical package that is enough you'd sometimes see in some packages they'll put in a total like this which very simply is just going to be some of these guys here like that that would be one way and this would be it okay now if you wanted to actually check was that actually correct I'm just going to just quickly do this here. This is not a requirement really for the ANOVA, but it's just if you were to do it, look, are you actually doing it correctly here? You What this total sum of squares would relate to is what is the difference between each of, your, uh, each of your values and the overall mean squared, okay? The difference between each of your values and the overall mean. So if I just do that here, so I'm taking the first value, I'll minus the overall mean, and then I'm going to square that. And I want to do that for all 50, so I need to lock going to lock the column I have and then the row that I have like that, that should work out fine. Go across, that's five across, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. And then if I sum them up, I should get the same thing. Now you don't really, you don't have to do this step, but I just feel like if you're doing it kind of manually yourself, it's just a nice way of checking and you can see, look, we're getting the exact same answer. And also then the other way of thinking of a degree of freedom is your degree of freedom all traditionally is the total number of measurements is in your sample size less one so we 50 measurements so less one is going to be 49 okay then when it comes to the f ratio so what i've said here is with the f ratio what you're looking at is the the variance between in with respect to the variance within so your mean square is ultimately your variance okay so the variance between is 87.88 the variance within is 9.67 so on and this is the answer we get back 9.084 and so on like that okay now as a quick check to make sure look has everything gone out gone okay there what i've just done is i've just imported the data into uh, our studio so i've set up this script already where i've imported the data and i'm just focusing on the, the, the data values we have i'll just show that bit there just just so we can see look that everything is okay so this the, i just imported the, those values there and then i'm just doing the quick checks i'm converting it to a wide long format i had to do the checks and uh, i suppose homogy uh, normality homogeneity variance mainly just a sanity check that everything was okay but ultimately i just want to run off the ANOVA. so that's what i just want to do here and if we run off the ANOVA, it's loading the various packages look you can see here here are our values so if i just open up the excel for a second uh sorry there actually let me do it this way here like this sorry there and we can just see here we have it okay so sorry now for this one so well I was thinking that that could just shoot open apologies now for that and if I go across here you can see look your sum of squares between 351.5 that's what we have the sum of squares within 433.3 that's what we have but then look at the F ratio 9.085 9.085 if we were rounding it to three decimal places okay so i just find that i would always say to the students so if you're going to be doing a lot of ANOVAs in your research it's not that you need to be doing them all and verifying the calculations or anything like that but i just feel that it's good for your own self especially maybe if you're a phd student and you're kind of prepping to going into a viva that it's just kind of i would feel useful to actually just 
understand look what what's actually been calculated when you do it and ANOVA okay it's not that you have to go off and do all the calculations by hand it's definitely not but it's just that you have a certain appreciation that when you're reporting your ANOVA results you know what's what has actually happened behind the scenes I feel that that's a good thing especially if you're going off presenting your results in a Viva maybe you might be like to be comfortable with that when you're doing it at a presentation for a conference or whatever the case is okay so look I just felt that that might be just uh, something that might be a help to some uh, hopefully you find it uh, somewhere useful uh, as always if you do then you know so, uh, feedback is great I suppose um, you can hear you've the various uh, ways that you can contact me uh, if you liked this video then liking it sharing it is great Super subscribing to the channel and you'll get more updates I'm going to just look at doing um, an Excel I suppose the calculation for a two-way Nova later on as well I just feel it'd be just kind of good just to see look how do we actually do the interaction effect and how do we test this uh, get the F ratio for an interaction effect and then after that I look I mean you can go off and do a three way and over then yourself it's just to kind of see the properties of it and again I would just feel it's important that especially for if you're a kind of maybe a research student and you're going off to be doing a presentation on these results it's good to have confidence in look what actually are you presenting what is the calculation actually done behind the scenes okay so hope you're happy with this and um, let's uh, to next time